In today's video, I'll be showing you the brand new keyword research tool for Amazon self-publishers. Let's go. Hi guys, so yes, we have made a brand new keyword research tool, one that is made exclusively for Amazon self-publishers. And actually, if you've been following us for a longer while, you may know that we had a previous iteration, a previous version of a keyword research tool. Uh, however, this one is brand new. It doesn't actually use any of the, pretty much none of the previous components, the po components of the previous uh, keyword research tool. So this one is brand new. It is much faster, much easier to use. It gives you more keywords and it gives you a lot of very, very powerful uh, data points. So this tool is a lot more powerful and will be uh, as always, as we always do, we will be improving it and making it even more powerful than it already is throughout time. So let's check it out. So, all right, here is what it looks like. So it looks like your standard, um, your standard keyword research tool. I'll enter the keyword for this uh, showcase. Let's do a popular keyword, which is gonna be coloring book and let's let it load. So this is how it works. So it loads for you a list of, a very big list of, um, very big list of uh, related keywords, keywords that are related to this seed keyword that you entered, and then you can request it to uh, very quickly and easily load the data points, the uh, lot of different valuable data points, all of which I'll get into uh, in this video. So let's request all of the most popular ones. Just let it load, you see, as you can see, it's very quick. All right, so first things first, let's break everything down. So. First and foremost, we have, of course, all of the related keywords, the keywords that are related to the seed keyword that you entered. Here in this case, we have 437 keywords, all of which, and I'm gonna stress this, make sure I really stress this, all of these keywords come from Amazon. These are not Google keywords, these are not <laughs> DuckDuckGo or, or, or Bing keywords, they're just keywords that come from somewhere else. All of these are Amazon keywords, very important. Uh, why that is, is because data from Amazon is much more potent and much more, uh, accurate and powerful for us than let's say Google data. And I'll probably get a bit deeper into that later throughout this video. So, all right, we have all of these, uh, a big list of keywords. You can copy these keywords. You can also, what you can do is you can go to Amazon and you can check out the uh, first page of Amazon very quickly through this see on Amazon little icon next to each of the uh, keywords. So you can check out the first page for each of these keywords on Amazon with just a simple click of a button and then you can, you know, you can have a more granular research of the specific uh, books that rank for this keyword, open up the Chrome extension, etc., etc. All right, next, let's now start getting into the uh, data points. So first and foremost, we have the holy grail data point, which is estimated Amazon search volume. So these numbers right here are estimates of how many times a month do people type in these keywords into Amazon. This is very, very, a very, very powerful uh, data point. And, and again, just like for the keywords, we also made sure that the search volume is calculated based off of real Amazon data points. Now, I cannot, I am not at liberty to say what is our uh, secret and proprietary uh, algorithm to calculate the, uh, the search volumes. However, I can tell you that it uses several Amazon data points and that they're all Amazon data points. Again, really, really important that this data comes from Amazon because if the uh, data that we use to give, give you these estimates comes from Amazon, this means that the data is more, again, it's more accurate and it is more, having it be more accurate, again, will empower you to make uh, better and more informed decisions as opposed, so imagine if this, uh, if these uh, search volume data points were coming from like Google, you know, somebody would just take a Google search volume times 0 0.5 or 0 0.8, which some other tools uh, have done in the past and maybe they, they still do it. Anyhow, these data points are, um, again, come from Amazon. So this right here is a very important and very powerful uh, data point that you can use to really gauge demand and popularity of certain keywords, not to be understated. And once again, Remember that the keyword, the information that comes from Amazon is about people that are willing to buy. People don't just, you know, people go to Amazon to buy stuff. And when they type uh, keywords into the search bar, into the Amazon search bar, they are very willing, they're showing very high intent of purchasing. So that's why these, this data point is very, very powerful as opposed to Google. 
on Google, most people search for information as opposed to Amazon, people search for products. So just again, to re-emphasize why this is very, very powerful. And what you can also do here is you can sort the keywords based on the highest search volume. So here I sorted based on uh, in a descending order. So from biggest to highest. Uh, so here I see that the most popular keyword from all the coloring book keywords is actually adult coloring book, which if you're familiar with this niche won't really come as a surprise for you. So we see that this one is the most popular one at the moment. And, and then you can see just how they stack up based on their uh, popularity. So that's search volume. That's all about demand. That's all about popularity. But as you know, it's not just about that. It's also very important for you to understand competition. How competitive is a certain keyword? So first and foremost, to inform us about the uh, competitiveness of a keyword, we have the number of competitors. So the number of competitors just shows us how many titles are competing to be ranked for this specific keyword. And that gives us a very good indication of how competitive uh, this specific keyword is. And here we're seeing that most of them are, you know, highly, highly competitive. There's 60, mostly 60 to 70,000 uh, competitors for each of these uh, keywords. So they're highly competitive. Then next up, we have another competition indicator, which is page one average reviews, which just shows you uh, on page one for each of these keywords on page one of search, how, what is the average number of reviews uh, that the books have on this first page? I hope that makes sense. So you, if, if you were to uh, go to each of these keywords, uh, page one of search, what is the average number of reviews that the books, uh, that all of the books there have? So this really helps you to get an understanding of how solid the footing, the foothold of the books on that have managed to rank on page one, how solid is their foothold? So the number of reviews really will help you to understand that. So here we see that the books on page one have thousands and thousands of <laughs> reviews. So again, that tells us it's highly competitive. Now I do see one that has below a thousand average reviews, which is Christmas coloring book. That's still, generally that's still very, very high. Again, different people have different approaches. Generally speaking, you would aim for, especially if you don't have uh, a lot of a big budget to spend, a relatively big budget to spend, you would be aiming for a lower uh, number of uh, reviews. This would just make things easier for you. Whereas we see that the, the, big, the big keywords here have, um, they're super competitive. Not only we see that they have a very high number of competitors, the competitors also have a very high number of reviews, which just means they're very, very established. So it may be quite challenging to get ranked for these uh, keywords. The next up we have page one average price, which indicates to you the average price of all of the books that are ranking on page one, which can again help you to get a better understanding of this keyword. And in a broader sense, it can also help you to get a better understanding of, uh, of the niche. So how much are people willing to spend in these, um, in these niches? Is it like, is it just like, is it mostly an average of like $6 or here we see that it varies. We see that it also goes up to 1274. So, which is actually a good sign. So people are willing to spend, uh, more in for, for books, uh, that are ranking on page one. So that's actually quite important. So if the entire market is selling books at a very low price, it will be more challenging for you to come in with a book and that says like, okay, my book is going to be twice as expensive. If everybody's doing five ninety nine, you're going to be doing 11 99. That's just going to be, you know, it's going to be more challenging for you to do that because there's so many other options at cheaper price points, uh, unless you have a very, very strong brand or some, uh, some unique strategy there. All right, so next up we have title density. This one can really help you to, again, understand competition. So what title density basically is, if you look at each of these keywords, title density just tells you how many times each of these exact keywords, so in this example, coloring book, how many of the titles that are ranking on page one, so how many of the titles on page one exactly have this exact keyword inside of the title? Does that make sense? So let me illustrate. So let's go to the search page for the keyword coloring book. And so what title density is indicating to us is how many of these titles is, has this exact coloring book, these two words inside of the title. So in this case, it is 25. And that again tells you it's very competitive. Almost all of the titles here in the next metric, I see that there's a total of 31 
uh, 31 uh, results, 31 titles ranking on page number one, uh, showing on page number one. And I see that 25 of them have this, uh, this keyword inside of the title. That again tells me it's very, very competitive. So if you remember how the Amazon algorithm works, the uh, algorithm puts a lot of weight in the keywords that are in the title. It really gives them a lot of strength. So if 25 of the books that are already on page number one already have this keyword inside of the title, it's very competitive, not to mention the other competition points. So again, but this will vary for different keywords. However, if you look down here, you see that these three keywords have a title density of zero, which just means that none of the uh, books that are ranking on page number one have this exact keyword inside of their um, titles. Now that alone doesn't tell you that you need to, you know, that it's a great idea to uh, create a book uh, and for and, and target it uh, for these specific uh, keywords. You have to couple it with the other competition points that we just touched on, but it still can uh, tell you quite a lot about a specific keyword. All right, and lastly, we have three data points that can give us a better feeling, a better understanding of the keyword as a whole. So first up, we have page one format distribution. So what this means is out of all of the, uh, all of the books ranking to be shown for this, uh, for each of these keywords, what, are, what is the format distribution? So how many of them are um, print books? So that includes hardcovers, paperbacks, uh, spiral bounds, etc. How many are audiobooks and how many are Kindle books? So what is the distribution between these three main formats? Print, audio and Kindle. What is the distribution? So here naturally, quite naturally for a coloring book, we'll see that, you know, pretty much, yeah, here we see that all of them are print books. Of course, that's quite, that, that makes uh, quite a lot of sense. However, for other niches like nonfiction, high content niches, you're gonna have a, a pretty even balance between these couple of formats. And that can give you a better understanding of what are people buying mostly. So are people buying mostly the, um, the paperbacks? Are they buying a mix of paperback and Kindle? Or is it a fairly even uh, distribution between print, ebook, and audio? So you can see what are the trends over there. And again, let's re-emphasize, the Amazon algorithm is very smart. So it will only show on page number one, based on the track record of the specific books in the various formats, it will only show people what, it, what they are most likely, what it thinks they are most likely to buy based on the history of what other people have done. The next up we have the page one average age, which just indicates the average age of the books on page one, which can uh, give us a better understanding of the maturity, if you will, the age, how old this specific, uh, well, this is in a broader sense, so how old is this, uh, is this niche and how old are the books that rank under these keywords so here we're seeing that you know mostly it's a year a year and something some vast majority of the books for that are in the coloring book space are a year and a half old so here based on these data points we're kind of seeing that the uh, the coloring books for kids are actually older they've been around for a longer time and they're still selling and they've been they're, they're older than the um, adult coloring book space that's just just as a rough uh, kind of idea that i'm getting from seeing these uh, data points that the adult coloring book space is, is newer than the, um, than the kids coloring book space, which is actually, you know, if you think about it, that makes actually quite a lot of sense. And then the last column that we have here is the dominant category. What is the dominant level two category um, for each of these uh, keywords? So here we're seeing that it's a, it's a mix of arts and photography, children's books. Here we see, interestingly, for anime, well, yeah, that, that would make sense. Comics and graphic novels. We're seeing what is the dominant category. So this is most helpful when you have a, a keyword that you're not that, or keyword or niche that you're not that familiar with. It can tell you like, what are, what are the books that are uh, ranking on, uh, on page one, ranking most highly, which categories, which main level two categories they are in. And by the way, level two category just means books would be level one. And then you have the, the next level branch that would be, these, these are level two. So, so the next level branch is arts and photography, uh, children's books, and so the big uh, subcategories that are one level below books or one level below Kindle books or our audio books. And then last but not least, I'll also mention that you can export all of this data, all of these keywords and all of their respective data points to a CSV file for further analysis. Further, um, you know, you may, might want to compile different seed keywords, the results from different seed keywords together, 
or whatever it is that you have in mind. So guys, that was the new and improved keyword research tool. As you saw, it has the ability to show you very powerful and very uh, potent, so very valuable uh, data points. So, so it's an amazing tool for uh, research. It's an amazing tool for keyword discovery. And it's also an awesome tool for uh, when doing Amazon ads. You can just, as always, you can uh, copy either the keywords separately or you can copy them all at once and just plop them into your Amazon ad keyword targeting campaigns. And if you want to crush it throughout the next year, I highly suggest that you get your hands on this tool as well as all of the other tools inside of the BookBeam uh, toolset. It's only getting better and more powerful throughout time. So BookBeam can really give you that edge over the big crowd of the other self-publishers. So guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.